So welcome back. This is the newest video from Flying Raven Studios and I am once again Ben. This week we're going to look at Necromunda and we're going to look at armour this time around. We did skin before, this time we're going to focus on armour. Now, if you're a Goliath fan, you like that kind of red colours and they're the standard ones, but what about a hazard suit orange? So, as we all know, orange isn't the best colour to paint, so we're going to delve in, see what we can do and have a bit of fun. So sit back and enjoy. So let's get started. As you can see, we're using the stimmer from the last video where we've done the skin. But this time we're gonna have a look at the armor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with pallid witch flesh as an undercoat for the orange. Now, the idea is that you kind of put this all over the sections of armor that you're gonna to want to be orange in the next step. Now this paint is one that you want to water down and put a couple of coats on. So this is obviously the first coat, but I end up putting two coats on just to give it a good, clean, consistent covering all over the grey primer that's underneath. As you can see, I'm just going over the main front chest section, which I think will look fantastic with the, the orange hues and the orange colours that it finishes off with. And then the collar around the neck. Now, be a little bit careful with the collar around the neck because what you don't want to do is get any of the new paint on the skin that you've already painted. So just take your time, don't rush it and enjoy. Once you've picked all those last little bit of details out with the armour in the white, you will be finished and ready for the next step. So as you can see, this is just after the first coat. I then go away and put an extra coat on it, which I didn't think you really needed to sit and watch. So that's then when we move on to the next stage. The next stage is going to be using Griffin Hound Orange which is one of the new Games Workshop contrast paints. Now, I was a little bit cautious when it came to contrast paints when they first came out. I know a lot of other people said the same, but I will say they are fantastic. They work really well as a nice solid base for any of the details and color that you want to use afterwards. They give good depth and they have a nice consistency so that when you paint with them, they flow really well. Again, you're aiming for two coats on this. This is just the first coat, but I then put another coat on top of it to give it that real depth of color and feel. And once you've done that, you get to do the classic Agrax Earthshade over the top of it. Now this just kind of fills in the colours in between where the contrast paint has gone. The idea of the contrast paint is that obviously it runs into the recesses and it leaves the lighter areas lighter and the darker areas more of a depth of orange. But with Necromunda you want that kind of grim dark look so you want that to have that grime in the recesses which is what this gives. And now we let that dry. So next up is a little bit of a mix. We use the orange contrast paint again, but we put in some Avaland Sunset with it. Just mix a little bit. So kind of a 50-50 split between the two. This is then used for highlighting all the surfaces. So this is the most raised, the most kind of prominent sections where the grimy light from the underhive would just catch the edge of it. As you can see that's really brought the kind of 
darkness out from the recesses but also made the, the highlights that you've just put on really pop. Next up is just painting the trim. Now I just did this with lead belcher and then with a bit of a wash over the top of it just to dull it down slightly because it looked too bright. This is the stage where you want to take your time even more than the first stage with the white because you've now done a large part of the orange. You've now put in those details, put in that extra work and what you don't want to do is then accidentally get silver all over the sections that you've already painted. So as I said, just take it a little bit slowly with this bit. Make sure you get all of the trim and all of the sections that you want. Ensuring that any of the details that are on the armor, so like in this case, the skull that's on the front of his chest is also highlighted with the silver. and then the strips down the edge of the boots, just because I thought they looked really nice with silver. And there we go. That's the silver section done. So let's take a look at the finished product. I have put a little bit of extra detail on where the screen on the front and the glasses which hold his chemicals in that make him so happy to go into combat. But I hope you liked it. Well, there you go, orange armor. Now everyone says it's difficult, but with the new paints that GW have brought out and a few extra other little techniques and things, it's kind of come out with a really nice hazard suit look, which let's be honest, was what we were looking for. So I hope that helps. And I hope that the oranges that you're looking for and you're searching for can be done in the same way. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the box below and we'll try and get back to them. Or if you've got any other ideas about whether you want to change the way that your orange looks and make it slightly darker, slightly lighter, or just got more depth to it, please stick them in and we'll, uh, we'll come back to you as quickly as possible with that. But as always, smash the subscribe button, hit that like button and ring the bell, and you can stay up to date with all of our videos. But I hope that helped. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, stay safe and we will see you again.